the last group of vertebrates we're going to talk about are us, humans. Uh, where did we come from? How do we fit in? So we're going to discuss the origin of humans by looking at the features that humans share with other animals and other related species. Uh, and we'll look in particular at fossils of, of extinct relatives, hominid fossils, and the traits they share. This is all kind of part of, of evolution. How does evolution occur? It's macroevolution, the development of new species. These accumulate from changes, of course, genetic changes to populations. But over long periods of time, we can't see the individual changes in the populations. We just see new species. And this is macroevolution. So, um, you know, this is where we come from. What is our biological origin? It's, it's the fundamental question for people. And as scientists, we're looking at evidence. We look for shared features. We examine living and extinct animals, their anatomy, their behavior, their ecology, and their genetics, just like a detective. Humans, during embryonic development, share all the features of chordates. Okay, they have a nerve cord, they have that's dorsal and hollow. They have a notochord that's replaced by a vertebrae. They develop pharyngeal slits, okay, which uh, are present for a short period of time, and they have a post-anal tail. Okay, so we are chordates. We also have all the features of adult vertebrates. We have a bony skeleton that's replaced our notochord. We have vertebrae and that's enclosing our spinal cord and a, uh, we have a distinct head and brain with sense organs and we have a paired appendages like all vertebrates. Okay, among the vertebrates, we are the group of mammals. Okay, like all mammals, we are warm blooded. We have hair, some of us have more, some of us have less, some of us have it growing in some places and not others, but we have hair. Okay. Mammals are the only tetrapods that have hair. Um, we also have mammary glands and we have internal development with a placenta. And the placenta develops from the amniotic egg. So we're linked to all the tetrapods. Like ma all mammals, we have heterodont teeth, which means we have different shaped teeth. We have molars in back. We have incisors, biting teeth in front, canine teeth like a wolf. They're kind of smaller, but they're still there. So we're clearly mammals, okay? Among the mammals, we belong to a group called the primates, okay? The primates include things like lemurs and, and lorises and tarsiers, the monkeys, the new world and old world monkeys, and then uh, uh, the, an the anthropoids, the hominoids and things like that. All primates share grasping fingers and toes binocular vision, relatively large brains, um, and some reproductive features, okay? In particular, the hominoids, we have grasping hands with opposable thumbs. We have fingernails, not claws. We lack an external tail, although we have a tailbone, which is a, a small internal structure that's from the post-anal tail. The hominoids have large brains, adaptable behavior. They all live in social groups, are, have a long learning period, slow development, and a long life. Okay, The hominoids, the living hominoids we're most closely related to are the chimpanzees and the gorillas. And like us, they are, are, have this long period of learning, they have a large brain, they have adaptive, flexible behavior. They're able to teach chimpanzees and gorillas sign language. Okay. Um, they can understand spoken language. Uh, these free living groups of chimpanzees and gorillas have their own cultures. They pass things down from one generation to the next. They are tool users. Okay, they, they fashion tools and use simple tools. Okay, and the genetics links us. We are, these are our most closest relatives. They have genes that are very similar to ours. Uh, not identical, but similar. Okay, there are also some fossil intermediates. These are mostly Africans, um, fossils, species in, that are found in Africa, but not entirely. The time frame that this occurs with is, uh, you know, from maybe 5 million years ago to 
to in the last 50,000 years, and, and these have increasingly human features. Okay, these features make these, fossil, these animals fossil intermediates. They're, some of them are bipedal, that they walk upright as a regular basis. They, they, uh, no living apes do this, but we see lots of evidence that fossils did it regularly. And we, we know, well, we know because of the shape of the feet and the knee, the limb proportions, the structure of the uh, pelvis, the hip, the curvature of the spine and the position of the opening for the skull. We also have fossilized footprints that differ from footprints of chimpanzees and, and other apes. We also see skulls that show intermediate features. Um, modern chimpanzees have a cranial capacity of about 400 cubic centimeters. Okay, our cranial capacity is somewhere around 13 to 1500 cr cr uh, cubic centimeters. Um, we also have very small teeth, very flat brows and flattened face, but we do have a, a distinct forehead and a distinct chin, which you don't see in any living ape. And we see these. Okay, we also see evidence of, of elaborate tool use, burials, art, possibly language, um, and, and other things. Again, things found in no living ape that make these fossil hominids fossil intermediates. Okay, these are uh, some list of the species and the, the chart shows us the, the times at which they lived. Um, Australo, Australopithecus afarensis, that's Lucy, a famous, very famous fossil. Uh, then Robustus, Homo habilis, uh, Homo erectus, they don't show a skull there, but that's a really important one. And then uh, Homo heidelbergus and Homo neanderthalensis. Those are really important. Okay, so Australopithecus afarensis lived about three to four million years ago, completely bipedal, the knee, the hip, the skull, showed that they Lucy walked upright. She had a cranial capacity of only slightly bigger than uh, a chimpanzee and was really not found with significant tools or artifacts. Okay, but one of clearly on a line that's not chimpanzee and, and the, the face is starting to look flatter with smaller teeth. The first perhaps hominid that we would recognize as human was Homo erectus. And Homo erectus was really successful, lived 2 million years ago to about 300,000 years ago. Uh, not only lived in Africa, but spread throughout Asia and Europe. Had a cranial capacity double the size of, uh, more than double the size of a chimpanzee. Um, lots of evidence that Homo erectus produced stone tools, uh, used fire, of course was a bipedal walk, upright walk, walker with large skull and a flatter face. Okay. In, uh, in Europe and in Asia, Homo erectus gave rise to Homo sapiens neanderthalensis. Okay, that's, those are Neanderthals, and the Neanderthal is shown on the left there in the kind of brownish skeleton. Neanderthals lived eh, three to 400,000 years ago, all the way up to about 25,000 years ago, and their cranial capacity was even larger than ours. They had big, a big skull. Um, they were biped, extensive use of stone tools and fires and shelters. Uh, they, they drilled holes and teeth to make necklaces, things like that. And there's good evidence from genetics that um, Europeans and Asians uh, are the result of inbreeding with uh, Homo, Homo sapiens neanderthalensis and Homo sapiens sapiens. Um, and so there's, there's good evidence that they were closely related enough that we could interbreed and that we carry some of their genes. The first truly modern humans that we, we identify as being our species appeared around 200 to 160,000 years ago in Africa, okay? They had our cranial capacity, our flat face, small teeth. Um, they were using lots of tools. They were producing lots of art. They were doing lots of things that we do. Uh, they were uh, making corded materials. They were, they were doing lots of things. And then from Africa, they spread all over the world. 
So uh, by looking at these traits, again, living and extinct animals, looking at genetics, looking at fossils, looking at homologies, we can see this link, this, um, this link between us and, and other uh, species of primates and shows us where we came from. The consensus right now is that modern humans are mostly from Africa, but due to some interbreeding with um, Neanderthals and maybe another species in Asia, that's, that's we've modern humans evolved from, from that, that situation. Okay, why did we, you know, why are humans here? Well, you know, that has to do with changing environments. Okay, most primates are forest species. They live in trees. They have this really mobile front limb for climbing. We have it as well. We can raise our arm above our head, extend it behind us, move it in front of us. That's an adaptation for climbing. Okay, however, in you know, the last 250, 300,000 years, forests in Africa are shrinking. There's expanding grasslands. Okay, it pays to be able to walk on two legs if, if they're, you're in a grassland because you're up higher. It pays, pays to be able to use your hands for tools and it appears there was this expanding niche for a, a, an intelligent social omnivore that could, uh, you know, could, could work, work in grasslands and that appears to be us. Okay, 